till this point, we have talked about variables, we have talked about different type of data. So we have worked with normal variables in which we can have numbers, we can have string, we have worked with list, tuple, dictionary, set. Now let's go back to the basics of variable. So what I'm going to do is, let's say I have a as a variable and I'm trying to store a value which is 5. A simple expression where you're saying a equal to 5 and we know when you print a it will be 5. Now what is happening behind the scene? So we are assuming that there will be a box inside the memory which will be having this value 5 and the name of that variable or the box is a right that's what we are thinking now. Now when I say b equal to 5 so of course it should make a different box so there should be two boxes one with name a and one with name b and if you try to print b of course it will also print 5 right so two boxes same value 5 and 5 and we got a name a and b so let's say if you are storing this value in the memory so of course there should be a address to it now when you say you have an address there i want to print it how do i do that may not be an address but there should be some identity to it and that's what I want to print. And that's where inside Python we got this inbuilt function called id where you can pass the variable which is a and it will print the identity of it. And that's what you got here. So this is the huge number but remember the last three digit which is uh, 0, 5, 6. Let me try it for b. Of course it should have a different id but when you print it you will get the same value. I mean that's weird. Why two different boxes have the same address? something like this on the screen. It's a conflict, right? Now, what is happening is, let me try, okay, so let me explain with this changes. Let me make B with value 6. When you do this, and when you try to find the ID of a B, so before I do that, what do you think? Are we changing the value of the box from 5 to 6 with the name B? If that's what you're thinking, say this, we got a different address. That means B is not the name of the box. It's basically every box will have an ID and A, B, all those things are just references. But referring to what? They are referring to something called objects. Everything in Python is an object. A simple number like 5 is an object. A name like Naveen is an object. A list which have multiple values is an object. Everything in Python is an object. Okay, so what we are doing is those those boxes are your objects and inside this object you got values. And all this A, B and whatever variable name which you use, they are just references and they are referring to it. So in the initial case, when you say A equal to 5, we got a box there with 5 and it will also check, do we already have 5 in the memory? If you already have 5, it will not create a new box. It will use the existing box. But since we executed this as the first line, we don't have 5 anywhere. So it will create 5 and it will refer A to that address. So there should be some area where you have a, a mapping of the references and the objects. So A is referring to 5 box. And then when you create B equal to 5, here also we are creating a variable which is referring to a box 5. Now since we already have 5 here, it will not create a new box. It will refer to the same box. So A and B referring to the same box. And that's why when you try to print the identity of it, you got the same values. But what happens when you say B equal to 6? Now in this scenario, it will say, okay, I'm trying to save 6. I don't see 6 anywhere. So I need to create a new 6 box or a box with value 6. So it will create that box and that box will have a different ID. And that's what you are printing it here. So B, which was initially referring to the box 5, it is referring to box 6 now. It's all references. Let me try one more thing. I will create a variable called k and k will be referring to let's say 5. Now what do you think? Are we creating a new box of 5? No, we have talked about that before. We have the same box of 5 but k as a new variable is referring to the box 5. Okay, so there are two variables referring to box 5 and one variable referring to box 6. Now, if I say b is equal to let's say 9, now b got a new value and if I try to find, okay, first of all, let me print the id of k. We have not done that. So you can see this the same value as a. And if you try to print the id of b, it's a new value now. Okay, so now we got two variables referring to a, uh, referring to 5, which is a and k. We got one variable referring to 9 and there is no variable referring to 6. Now what happens to that box 6? Because nobody is referring to it. It's a memory wastage, right? Because you have a box there and nobody is referring to it. So what happens in this case? Now in Python, we got something called a garbage collection. So garbage collection is like a mini software which comes to your memory and say, okay, I want to clean up. Now which object will clean up? Clean up. 
Will it clean up 5? No, because 5 is referred by A and also K. Will it clear 9? No, because 9 is ref referred by B. What about 6? No one is referring to 6. Now, in this case, garbage collection will say, okay, I got this object. Nobody is referring to it. Let me clean it. And that's what it is doing. And the same thing we do in our daily life, right? So let's say if you are cleaning a room and if you see a box or maybe if you see a remote lying on a floor, you know this remote is getting used for something. So it will you will keep it on the table. But if you find a paper, which is no one is referring to it, you will throw it. So it's all about references. So if one, if you find an object, no one is referring to it, just throw it. And now it's not just for numbers. We can also use it for, let's say, string. So let me create a variable called name and let me have my name there, which is Naveen. And let me create one more and I will say this is name one is equal to and I will say Naveen. Now, when you try to print the ID of name, and the ID of name one, you will find they are similar. So whatever we have talked about here is also applied for the name. So what is happening is inside your memory, you got this object called Naveen. And I mean, of course, you got the object and you got a value Naveen. And there are two variables referring to it. And this concept is called string interning. So basically, when you create a new string, it will check, okay, uh, we got a string pool. Inside this pool, let's create this variable or let's create this data Naveen, if not found. And then when you try to do that for the next time, it will say, okay, we already have Naveen in the pool. Let them refer to the same object. Why to create new one? That's a fun thing which Python does here. Now, this string interning works with the normal data, right? If you have a small string, it will work when one or two words. But let's say I will just clear this out and let me create a new variable called A. And in this A, I'm going to create a string. I will say my favorite color is black. That's the first string. And even B is the same. Now, whatever we have talked about till now, I have not changed anything in this text here. Okay, both are same. So, of course, it should be created only once in the memory. So, if you try to get the ID of A, it's this. And if you try to find the ID of B, it's this. And they are not matching. Why string interning is not working here? It's because string interning works with small words or maybe a couple of words, but not a string like this. Why? Is because if you try to store everything in a string pool, you're wasting your string pool memory because it's a small memory. And if you try to put big string, it's of no use. Maybe in normal life, we don't repeat the same string again and again. You do repeat words, but not the entire string. But yes, if you feel I got a message which is of 10 words and you want to repeat it, you can do string interning. There's a process for it. Uh, manually, you can ask your Python to say, hey, you know, I want this to be done using string interning. It will do it. But normally, it will not. And not just for string. Let's say if you work with numbers, because earlier we have worked with small numbers, 5, 6, 9. What happens when you work with big numbers like this? If you say A is equal to 1000 and B is equal to 1000, now what do you think? Will it be the same ID or different ID? They're different. So even that cache stuff works only for the small numbers, not even for big integers. Otherwise, you're wasting memory because you repeat small numbers, not the big numbers. So Python is smart in that case. So yeah, that's what about uh, how your variable gets stored in Python. See you in the next video.